Here's a little introduction for those of you who are new. Hello, I'm Linda. I'm 21, currently still in school. I'm Chinese, born and raised in Canada. I love food, fitness, peanut butter, protein pancakes, and I basically just film videos showing people what I eat, and I kind of just take you guys along the many ups and many downs of my journey, building, learning, and improving my relationship with food, my body, and myself. So I wanted to tell the story since the beginning of my YouTube journey. I just didn't really know what to say. I've never thought deeply about how cultural stigma, stereotypes, and pressures impacted my relationship with food, my body, and my self-worth or why it even sometimes felt like I was just born to hate my body. I never thought about any of that until recently. Where I had a super cool opportunity to work with Gymshark, an incredible Toronto-based production team to create some AAPI Heritage Month content. And I was asked some questions surrounding my story, how culture shaped my relationship with food and my body and what it was like being Asian in the fitness community. I was literally like, shit absolutely no clue. How do I tell my story if I don't even know it? So I kind of had to start at the beginning. I was born in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. My parents had immigrated from Tianjin, China for my dad's PhD. And that's when they had me. I grew up a very happy little human. My mom made sure I was fed extremely well, that I dipped my toes in all the extracurriculars. I was also immersed in like as much Chinese culture as possible. We would travel back to China, a Chinese cultural dance, a Chinese school. I took art lessons specifically from Chinese art teachers ate and I learned how to cook Chinese foods. I was exceptionally good at the eating part. We moved around a couple of times, but no matter where we ended up, I remember just looking around and feeling really different compared to classmates, neighbors, teachers, the people that I saw on the TV. And this was way back in the olden days before social media, TikTok, influencers, YouTube even. But princesses, popular girls, and famous people, they all had a couple things in common. They were beautiful. And beauty was white, thin, blonde, big, beautiful eyes, long, light hair, slim legs, not me who was actually very much the opposite. At age seven, being popular was like my life's mission. But no matter how hard I tried to play the same games, eat the same food, do my hair, talk in the same way, it just didn't work. I was still just me. The last one picked for group projects, gym class dodgeball games, the one girl that boys never looked at, and it felt like sh and I blamed my body, my genetics, my parents, and my culture for it. Even from like a really young age, I was a perfectionist, extremely self-critical, insanely insecure, and a very hard worker. I just didn't stop until I got what I wanted, and I wanted more than anything in the world to just fit in. And I don't mean to brag, okay, but I got so good at being what people wanted me to be. I discovered that when I say the right things, give the right gifts, and was just a little less myself, people liked me more. And that's when Linda the People Pleaser was born. Food is just my love language. It has been since like my very first cookie. I still remember it was a Tim Hortons M&M cookie. And the employee there actually gave it to me for free because I was staring at it for over an hour but didn't want to ask my mom to buy it for me. My diet used to consist of endless amounts of Chinese crackers, chicken pot pies, fish sticks, and milk as if it were water. I overate and I was overweight too. I just really loved food and eating was like my favorite hobby. It's so ironic that it's the thing that made me happiest that I thought I couldn't do anymore in order to be happy. Portion control, balanced meals, hunger cues, nutrients didn't exist to me, okay? My parents just kind of let me eat whatever I wanted to, and I guess either way, if they were stricter with my diet, it would have most likely ended up ruining my relationship with food anyways. Every year, height, weight, blood pressure, compare me to the national average BMIs, conclude I was overweight and that I need to go to McDonald's less. I think I was six or seven when I started weighing myself every day after meals in the morning, terrified to see the number go up. But it would because it was supposed to because I was a growing child. But I don't know when that number started to become my identity or when that red arrow started to decide whether I was hungry or not. Also an early bloomer, that explains the height, also the weight, also the curves. I used to like wrap my chest up in bandages and I only wore tops that hid my body. My self-esteem from that point on pretty much just plummeted. People called me fat, big boned, chubby, the list goes on. And I'm just assuming they didn't know better and neither did I to be honest when I believed them because those words, I became them. So in Mandarin, when you're chubby as a kid, you get called strong. It's like an insult. That's just so messed up. And the smaller, skinnier girls got called pretty. And I always got called strong. I hated being strong. I wanted nothing more than to be skinny because then I'd be pretty and I wouldn't hate my body. 
I remember every time we'd get measured for dance costumes, I'd suck in my stomach so hard because I didn't want my dance teacher to think I was fat. I remember never smiling in pictures with my teeth because my face would look too fat. I remember being too embarrassed to eat lunch or sweets and had to dab the oil off the pizza because I was too fat. I remember I was craving popcorn after lunch one day, so I poured myself a bowl and halfway up the stairs, I heard my family talking about how I needed to stop eating because I was too fat. I cried. It's just interesting that it's those comments and moments, the ones that seem the most insignificant, are the ones that actually stick with you. My favorite one would have to be, you're actually kind of pretty for a Chinese girl. The older I got, the more I tried to fit into both cultures, and the more I felt like I was rejected from either. And let me show you why. No wonder I had a freaking identity crisis every single day. Like, I don't know, I, I don't even, I, don't, I was literally trying to be two opposite people. Every time I'd go back to China, I'd be too westernized, too tan, too bulky, too big. And then when I'd come back from a month of trying to conform myself to Asian beauty standards, I would have a strained relationship with food and I would be, be too, too Asian. Asian. Of course, at the time, I didn't know that I would never feel truly accepted for who I was anywhere until, you know, I accepted myself first. Now, food is a huge part of Chinese culture and it makes me so sad that I was so ashamed of being Chinese at such a young age. I remember at lunchtime once my mom packed me some noodles and all the kids made fun of me. And I literally had to hide in the hallway underneath like the coats and eat my lunch because I was so embarrassed. And the only thing trips back to Asia meant to me was weight gain. Honestly, I don't even remember the trips. I was so distracted by food, my appearance, planning and calculating what I couldn't eat, what I already ate, how not to eat more. And these are moments and memories I will never get back. Time with family, I will never get to experience again. An amazing food that I may never be able to taste, ever. I put living on hold until I got the right body. So quite literally, I've never really lived. 10 years ago, there was one fitness influencer on YouTube. Welcome to the Blogilates era. I'm not kidding when I say I lived and breathed Blogilates. I would throw a fit and cry my eyes out if the Wi-Fi was down and I couldn't do my Blogilates for the day. She had a workout for every single part of myself that I hated. It was perfect. The perfect beginning to my body dysmorphia and exercise addiction. I blamed her program and her advice for years for propelling me forward into my eating disorder. But the truth is, now in retrospect, it's never anyone else's fault for how you see, treat, or value your own body. But I was like a 10 year old baby child, so I literally couldn't have known any better. And at age 10, I didn't know about protein or over-exercising or that my body needed calories to survive and rest days to recover. That hard work can't undo genetics. I didn't know that Bloglotties was actually not the answer to all of my insecurities. Guys, I believed everything she told me, every workout title. I never skipped a day. I got strong, I got small, I hit goal weight after goal weight after goal weight, and I genuinely thought I was doing the right thing. Skinny was right, skinny was health, skinny was pretty, skinny was good enough, but I could never get skinny enough. Fear kept me going. I was terrified to gain it back, to plateau. More workouts, more rules, less food. Rice became bad, oil became scary. Anything processed was the enemy. And gum and chewy vitamins became meals. I spent hours and I actually scheduled this into my planner, watching cooking videos and other people eat and pitying myself because I would never be able to taste a fried thing again. I remember squeezing in 20 burpees whenever I could, just dropping down and jumping. Crying in the bathroom at school with my hands under the blow dryer because my hands were so cold. Lying about food, giving away my lunch, throwing away snacks. Yes, I lost weight, but along with that, I lost friends, warmth, strength, energy, peanut butter, health, my period, my hair, my personality, my mom's cooking, creativity, life. I was losing my life. My ultimate favorite sport as a kid was basketball. Because I was taller than everyone, naturally, it was just easier for me to win. So the summer before my eating disorder got really bad, I did a basketball camp. I still remember the feeling of pure adrenaline and strength sprinting across the basketball court, past all the guys and scoring, showing off a lot, but feeling truly alive and like invincible. I thought exercise made me healthier, but during that month leading up to my hospitalization, I was still playing on a little intramurals basketball team. And I remember trying to sprint, like telling my legs to move, but I wasn't running. My legs couldn't physically carry me forward anymore. I remember trying to catch the ball and I couldn't grab it like it would just slip through my grasp. And I remember standing underneath the net and trying to shoot the ball and the ball would barely leave my hands. That was my body trying to tell me to stop. I was kind of too tired to live. But it was weird because my body was just like on autopilot. Every morning I'd wake up, I'd work out for a couple of hours, wear five layers of clothes, go to school, think about food in class, run home during lunch to fit in another workout, eat half a banana and a vitamin gummy, track it. 
blankets cry the entire way home because I was freezing in 12 degree weather and it wasn't just a tear guys like I was bawling my eyes out yell at my mom because she definitely put oil in the salad do another workout before bed land my calories for tomorrow make sure my thighs didn't touch set my alarm for 6 a.m. and do it all again lying in bed one night and it was November and we were planning to do like a Christmas family vacation and I was lying there I was like wait a minute how am I supposed to work out this much on vacation how am I gonna restrict enough to keep all the weight off how am I supposed to get out of eating if we go out to eat and I remember feeling so hopeless and thinking I don't know how I'm supposed to keep going and I don't know how I'm supposed to stop I didn't want to die but I didn't want to gain weight more I didn't want to die but deep down I knew I was going to if I kept going but the alarm would go off at 6 a.m. and I kept going. My mom practically saved my life. She forced, like actually screamed at the doctor to get me a blood test. The doctor that said she wouldn't get me one because my BMI was normal and that I looked really healthy. Yeah, that doctor. The blood test came back. We had a call from the emergency center at the hospital and I was rushed straight into the ICU. They eventually told me I was basically being forced to stay in the hospital and I had to eat every single thing that they gave me. I was anxious, I was crying, I was trying to figure out a way to escape, but I didn't end up escaping. My first breakfast was Frosted Flakes. First dinner was a pizza and a huge Rice Krispie. Onshore after onshore after onshore. Guilt, fear, anxiety, but relief. Finally found a way out. The months that followed were rough uncomfortable, emotional, confusing, mentally draining. Like words can't even begin to describe how hard recovery really is. So I'm not even gonna try, but I gained all the weight back and more, lost all my hair. I went back to China for the summer and I fell back into some restrictive patterns, got a really interesting mushroom cut. But despite all that, I began relearning what it meant to live. Hands down, a favorite year of life. Part of life that only happens because I chose myself and I chose recovery more days than not. I finally found the energy to study, to make art again, build friendships, go on family walks. I liked my appearance because I liked the way I was living my life. It was really nice to just be a kid for a while. Worry about grades, not my next meal, spending my time with my friends, not at war with my body, bonding over outfits instead of comparing body sizes. I ate Fruit Loops and Goldfish for lunch, cookies for breakfast, looked forward to pizza days, and I fell in love with what living was supposed to feel like. All the good and the bad that came with every day, setting goals and being able to work hard to reach them, getting ready for school dances, solving math problems, writing stories. And I found confidence and love for myself and all those other parts of life beyond a body. After that, the following years proved to me that eating was the easiest part of recovering from an eating disorder. But those years are also filled with so many stages of healing, relapsing, learning, love, heartbreak, tears, and boys, and so many mistakes and stupid but necessary decisions. Honestly, I spent most of it pretty miserable, insecure, slipping in and out of restricting and binging, trying to fit in with all the wrong people, relying on male validation, dressing to impress. And this is when the big booty trend was born. So you're telling me, <laughs> after 15 years of telling me to be as small and thin and skinny as possible, you want me to have a body that looks like this? High school taught me I would never be able to conform to the beauty standards and I wasn't meant to. I wasn't given this life to spend it chasing a certain look, weight, calorie goal, butt plumpness, to abandon my culture, to fit into another. I was meant to embrace myself, my butt, my boobs, my jiggliness, my facial features, my family, my story. I dated this boy for like three to four years, on and off. I know we're not supposed to look for validation from others and while the relationship was far from perfect. <laughs> when I was with this boy, it was like the first time I loved the way I looked. I was confident and felt beautiful. I remember a year went by, then another, then another, and I hadn't weighed myself or felt insecure in my body. And as cliche and sappy as it sounds, it's because he kind of showed me how I should have been loving myself this entire time. I showed him my truest self, no eyebrows, sleep drooling, my deepest thoughts. And he didn't run away. He didn't tell me to change or call me names or to lose weight. So he basically treated me the opposite of how I've treated myself my whole life. And I'm not saying go out and find someone new their love to replace the lack of self-love you have for yourself or for a confidence boost no he showed me the love that i needed to have for myself the beauty that i needed to see in myself that i was worthy of love not because of the way i looked but just me as me was enough and i never got to thank him for it because 
I didn't realize it until after. And then YouTube changed my life. Like actually my life. These past two years have felt like a literal dream movie out of body experience. Okay, I showed up as myself in a space full of toxicity and shameless hate and was accepted and welcomed with love. This became so much of my life and my purpose and my identity so quickly. And then a wall hit me. Industry pressures, hate comments, imposter syndrome, making money while also doing uni, experiencing COVID, going through a breakup. I really don't know what to say. lived her life trying to please others. Social media actually ripped me apart from the inside out and and killed me, but I needed it. I swear one second I was just sharing my love for fashion, fitness, and food, and boom, I was just suddenly mixed up in this world of athletes and workout routines and brand deals and criticism, and I ran as fast, as far away from myself, from actually dealing with all these feelings and fears and changes, and I used food, alcohol, people, excuse after excuse to just not feel. I always thought I had to earn love, be everything, be the best, try the hardest. I just, my, I just sound exhausting. That's why this doesn't come as a surprise for me. When people started watching me, I decided I have to work for it. To be good enough for this and that just wasn't possible because I've never been good enough for myself. Why do I get to meet Lily Sabri? Why do I get to earn money from doing what I love? Why do I get to have a community that supports me? Why do I deserve to be happy? No wonder I've never been truly happy with myself because I've never let myself be. If I'm just continuously finding reasons to deny all the good things that happen, let my imperfections define me and keep finding the next thing that I still don't have, I'll never learn to celebrate what I do. And of course I recognize there's so much privilege and luck behind hard work, but I've also learned to recognize and respect. I have worked my f***ing ass off for the past two years. I'm not even gonna pardon my language. I don't think many of you guys understand that like, editing takes a hot minute. It's now one. Hold an all-nighter. It's 11. And my like, I run out of storage every five seconds and I, I just don't know what's going on. It's uploading. Now I'm gonna spend the whole rest of the day Editing. Oh my god, I'm done. Not literally, I'm no. From teaching myself how to export videos to 6 a.m. to 1 a.m., 19 hour work days, 100 hour work weeks, and the time and energy and brain capacity of dedicated to editing, scripting, thinking, planning, creating, building, and learning. That is me. That's not just luck. And I deserve to be proud. Thank you. And you know when I finally realized this? At the Gymshark shoot last month. I showed up as myself, introverted, awkward, a little insecure, not a bodybuilder or super toned at all. I also may have cried aggressively out of stress in front of everyone. I don't know, I just feel like <laughs> so dumb. Like I can't even put together a sentence. <sighs> it's just like, it doesn't come naturally. And I like, show like everyone that I can't, can't like do it. Like I can't, I, get it. I just can't do it. Like, <sighs> I'm sorry. Stop! Don't say you're sorry! Literally just my truest self. And I was met with respect, and nothing bad happened, and it was like I could finally breathe. I realized it's okay to be myself and nothing more, and I still deserve to be there as much as anyone else. Someone was doing my makeup, doing my hair, offering me coffee. At this point, grateful doesn't cut it. I'm done choosing to believe that I don't deserve success, happiness, money, love, attention, unless I work harder, look smaller, achieve greater. Life is so quick. And instead of trying to find every single reason why I'm not good enough for it, and choosing to never be myself to please everyone else, I want to just take this life and freaking live it. It is like a full circle kind of moment how my eating disorder stemmed from like clickbait titles and thumbnails. And now social media is my job and I am proudly clickbaity. I use the same clickbait titles I know I 100% would have clicked on, expecting to find more food rules, weight loss tips, another body to compare mine to. But instead, this time, I'd be met by, I guess, my older self, a girl that's gone through it all, still going through it all, future me who eats without rules and works out to celebrate her body, who, after years of being at war with her differences, these differences in some way have become her confidence and lives happily with carbs and peanut butter and croissants and realized she didn't need to exercise like anyone else because she wouldn't look like them anyways and she wasn't meant to. She was always meant to look like her. Healthy was meant to look like this. 
on her. Videos in this community is the proudest, most important, most rewarding thing I will ever do. This community is the reason I don't regret any of it. But the fact that I chose recovery without knowing I could help others or share my story through videos or feel so fulfilled, the fact that I still chose to show up, eat, challenge, fight for myself just because, I'm equally as proud of that. I'm really proud of that little girl who was never told she was good enough or pretty enough or never understood why she had to struggle and work harder than everyone else to just be accepted. And I'm sorry that I was so hard on you, that I let you believe you were only beautiful if you looked less Chinese and ate less and were less of yourself. But now I seriously couldn't be more honored to be a part of my culture. I'm so proud that I didn't give up on my body and my body didn't give up on me because wow, life, the future can seriously amaze you. And you'll never know all the amazing people, opportunities, beautiful and better and delicious things that can be and will be yours until you choose yourself, until you stop reducing yourself down to a body. When you do that, life becomes a pretty incredible place to be. And your body becomes a pretty incredible body to live this life in. I just wanted to say I'm really proud of you because I know everyone has their own story. It's one comment that we will never forget that changed the way we saw our bodies. The first food rule that made us say no to dessert. The first time we Googled how many calories are in a banana. What it's like to feel purposely hungry. To absolutely hate what we see in the mirror, camera, or photo. We've all been hurt in different ways by diet culture, social media, beauty standards, cultural stigma. And I'm so proud of you because I know to some extent how hard it must have been. I find it really upsetting that we have to go through all of this, but I also find immense strength in the fact that we aren't alone. And because I know I wouldn't be the person I am today without it. And I wouldn't have taken the time to understand, admire, and accept her strength. And I wouldn't have found you, and you guys make me so much stronger. So, to all the Chinese parents that called me strong instead of beautiful, thank you. I am. And honestly, I'd rather be because Strong is beautiful. Whew. Um, that's me. If you're still here, thank you. And I hope you spend some time, you know, reflecting on your own journeys. I think you'll see that you're kind of insanely strong too. I love you guys so much. I've been talking for way too long, but just thank you again for being you, for being here, and for making me stronger. My butt hurts. Ugh.